Hello folks and welcome back to The Slice. It's been another great day here in Miami. Uh, big news though, Dominic Team has been knocked out in the first match of his tournament. He won in Neil Wells last week, but he got upset today by Hubert Hurkacz. I think I'm saying it right, I learned it a lot today, in his first match. Hurkacz though is an up and comer and he was playing hot fire. So we're gonna get into how that happened. We got audio recordings from both of those guys. Djokovic also took care of business. We're gonna talk about that. And we're going to preview Federer's match versus the qualifier Albert happening tomorrow on this episode of The Slice. Welcome to The Slice. Welcome to The Slice. Welcome to The Slice. Thanks for tuning in, folks. If you don't know, we've been here at Miami for the last couple of days covering the tournament with our first ever press pass. I've been able to watch lots of tennis live from the amazing Hard Rock Stadium, which is massive. But the coolest thing is being able to go courtside with these guys because it's just totally next level watching it like that. So I watched Team versus Hercats tonight from the courtside for about 75% of the match. And what I noticed is that it was, there wasn't much separating them throughout the whole thing. The first set was like neck and neck, just easy serving, you know, just holding serve both guys. And then at the 5-4 game when Team was serving, he was down or he was serving at 4-5, he's played a bad service game and uh, gave a few four unforced errors and then Hercats broke. I didn't actually see the f second set, but I know Team was up and then Hercats must have broken back and then finished it off. But what I did notice is Hercats, he's tall Polish guy and he has a nice forehand and he just really rips it, but his backhand is also really, really good. He used that well today. He, he does the slide out thing like Djokovic did, does, and he uses that really well. And he's like six foot three, four. So it's pretty impressive that he can do that. So here's Team on his loss talking about I thought he might have been a little bit tired tonight after playing, you know, all the way through India Wells, but he said that he wasn't. Uh, and this is what he had to say about that. What do you think that Hercats was doing really well tonight that was putting you off a bit? Mm, some things he did well. He, he served well. His first service is really good and uh, also very tough to read. And he returned well in in situations he needed it. I mean, I was uh, getting back from a love 40 in the, in the second set where he broke back. And there he put some really good returns in. And also the last game he was playing very well. Uh, my serve was not big enough today, I would say. Um, and uh, that's why, uh, yeah, he deserved to win today. Was it not big enough? Were you tired at all uh, coming into this week after a big last week? No, I mean I had uh, three days, which which uh, should be enough, and uh, that was uh, not the reason for for the loss today. So yeah, team talked about Hercot's serve being good and his backhand, and I asked team or so team so team talked about Hercot's serve and backhand being really good, and I asked Hercot's what he thought he did well tonight to hurt team. Yeah, what do you think was working well for you today in your game that enabled you to get and put team off of his? I think my backhand was was very good today. That that helped me a lot. Yeah. yeah I noticed like you would take it up the line a lot when he was when he would come with his forehand across court. You go up the line and pretty flat. Is that a shot that you've relied on in the past at all? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I mean, uh, against him, you all, uh, obviously need to adapt uh, against every other player. You play a little bit different against him. You play different. So, I mean. Every match uh, you have to adapt a little bit, and um, yeah, I mean today was it was working, so I'm happy with that. Yeah, when I talked to him earlier, I asked him about whether he'd rather play you or team, and he said he didn't care because it was just another challenge. Um, do you see any rivalry as far as you being a young guy and him being a young guy? Do you does that change anything for you, rather than when it's playing somebody like team, who you're kind of like the obvious underdog? Yeah, I mean. Uh, yeah, I wish him all the best. I mean, uh, against me, obviously not. So, I mean, yeah, uh, yeah it's going to be fun. I mean, for sure in the future we'll have many, many nice battles. So, I mean, looking forward for the, yeah, for the, our first battle on the, on the big stage. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, I'm sure you guys will be there. Thanks. Thanks. So, that's right. Up next for Hercats is Felix Auger Aliassim, which we've interviewed a couple times. He's obviously from Canada, Canadian boy. Uh, I asked him about the potential matchup between either of those two guys, and he said there wasn't much of a difference in who he played, but he'd be excited regardless. What poses more of a mental challenge for you in your next round? Playing someone like Dominic Team, who's like an established player and is you're probably the underdog, or playing like somebody else who's on the come up, like Hubert Hercats, mm -hmm. who's also young and is trying to make a name for himself? I think, uh, obviously, if I play Dominic, there's maybe an extra motivation to, you know, to beat such a 
such a high ranked player, but at the same time, you know, it's going to be a third round match uh, to go forward in the Masters, so I'm going to be uh, super excited and super motivated uh, either way. And, uh, you know, I don't think there's extra pressure me playing Hubert or me playing Dominic. Uh, for, me, for me, it's the same, yeah. Have you ever played Hubert before in, in younger I've tournaments? I played him, yeah, in a junior grade two in France, actually on clay. Uh, I won that match, but uh, obviously it was, it was already tough back then. It's going to be even tougher tomorrow or the next day if I play him. So yeah, that match between Hercats and and Felix Auger Ale team in two days is really good. I think it's people who are really paying attention to the scene right now got to know that. I think that's a very special match because I think those two guys are going to be playing in the ends of majors in the future here. So stay tuned for that if you're looking to see into the future of tennis. But talking about Novak Djokovic tonight, he played Bernard Tomic, which was going to be a tricky match. I talked about that in my last video, but he took care of business, no problem. I got down courtside for a bit of the match, which was just unbelievable to see Novak Djokovic, one of the all-time greats, just like right in front of me. Um, so that was awesome. He took care of business like I thought he kind of would. He said it wasn't too hard playing a non-rhythm player, even though he hadn't had a lot of rhythm because he lost early in Indian Wells. So that just leaves tomorrow. Tomorrow, Federer's playing Albert, Carlos Albert. I forget his first name. Uh, I don't see, think that should be any problem. It's, it's a qualifier that he hasn't seen much of, obviously, but it's going to be on center court. And if there's any type of upset, it would be absolutely mind-blowing at this point. Because, like, Dominic... Djokovic lost early in Indian Wells last week, but it was to an old vet, Philip Kohlschreiber. So it wasn't like out of completely nowhere. Albert would be out of absolute nowhere. But Federer should handle business tomorrow. What I'm also excited for tomorrow is Dennis Shapovalov versus friend of the show, Dan Evans. Uh, that's like happening at 11 a.m. I'm going to be courtside for that. I'll be watching that because it's just two guys who I love their style. I think that Evans could really actually affect Shapovalov in the way that Shapovalov hits big, but Evans handles pace so well, low slices that are so crazy. Uh, you just got to be kind of court level to watch how, how well he handles pace, and then he can also he's a great counter puncher as well. So that'll be an interesting match I'm excited for. But thanks for tuning in, guys. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, and please check out the link below. It's the link to the Slice Front Row, which is a show I do every two weeks, which you get to go deeper with us, ask questions, and have them answered on the show. It's four bucks a month, and basically it just makes it possible for me to keep doing content like this from tournaments like this. So thanks for checking it out. That's the link in the bio, and I appreciate all your support so much. Stay tuned for more from Miami. Thanks for watching, folks. Click here to subscribe. Click here to watch another video. And click on yourself to know that you're awesome and I love you.